Hello once again, and how are y'all doing? We're back with another guide. This time we're going to be talking about crystals specifically. If you find the guide to be helpful, please subscribe, watch the other videos, turn on notifications, like the video, leave a comment, show it to friends, all the things you're going to do, and let's get on into it. Now, I don't always say this in every video, but I do definitely intend to say it in every video. My videos tend to be a bit longer because I tend to go into a lot more detail on specific things. So I want to give you guys as much information as possible when you're trying to play this game. So just pick which things you want to cover more deeply and go into those sections. Do not try and cover all things unless you really want to because it can take quite a while to do so. So I listed out the timestamps down at the bottom. They cover everything, such as attack crystals, defense crystals, the different stats I'd recommend you run for each gear score, and all that. And as always, have fun with the guide. Now crystals are very helpful while you're playing the game because yes, you can upgrade your gear, you can do all this stuff, but there are certainly still things that'll be more difficult. And if you don't have crystals, higher grind zone spots like olens or underground gyphons ash forest even crypt things like this will be practically impossible if you do not run the right crystals now there are many sets of crystals and different ones do different things but we're here to talk about the different prices of them what exactly they all do and what sets we recommend you run based off of your gear and how much money you have to spare First off, different classes benefit from different types of crystals. For example, if you're playing something like Shy, something that improves attack speed or casting speed would help much more than something that would improve back attack damage, even though back attack damage of course would be good still, or something that increases crit hit damage, because Shy crits a lot of the time. And different crystals can help differently between PvE and PvP situations. For example, I as a Shy might not need the DP when going to Underground Gyphons or going to Ash Forest, but if I'm fighting an actual player, I'd need as much DP as I can possibly get. Now if you're just starting the game, you're off seasonal gear, and you're doing all this stuff trying to build your way up, the best crystals are always going to be the Hoom set, the Maclod set, and the Garbage set. Now there are many different versions of these, and each one has their own price. Now there is the cheapest one, and this I would recommend you run if you're trying to test out new areas or do different things without having to worry about your crystals breaking and them costing a fortune. Then there's the Han versions. These ones are the more moderate tier ones. Having a full set of these can cost roughly around 1 billion coins, so not too expensive but not too cheap, but I would still recommend you do build up to these. It gets around 600 gear score or so and you're starting to build up your gear a bit more. Then finally there are the ultimate versions of these. These ones are some of the best crystals that you can run in the game, and they're heavily sought after, which you can see if you take a look at the amount of pre-orders that there are at the maximum price. It is insane. These crystals have their own separate effect, which is the usable effect, as you can see at the very top of all of the list of effects. Then there's the two set effect and the four set effect. The two set and four set effects stack on top of the original effect. Therefore, if you had four of these crystals, you would gain four of the original effect, two of the two set effects, and one of the four set effects. Planet of the Morning Light also brought in a lot of these crystals, including Bong Wong's tier and all those different lower grade versions of it. Ita is here and all the lower versions of it. Kieran's here and all the lower versions of it. And of course, as we know, the ultimate versions of all the Garvish, Maclod, and Hoom sets. These are going to be the most expensive crystals, but the best ones you can run. Crystals are often split up into four different categories. The attack crystals, the defense crystals, the functional crystals, and the combined crystals. Functional ones are not often used inside of PvP or PvE, as they just give different things. For example, energy just gives a max energy of plus 10 or how Ascension Crystal just gives max jump height. These don't really make much of a difference when grinding or when doing PvP, and defense and attack crystals are often more used. Now, combined crystals are a bit of an oddity because they are a hit or miss crystal. First off, we'll start with the attack crystals. For PvE, what I would recommend running out of the attack crystals would be crystals of Elkars, Jin Magic Crystals of Vipers, Hawk Red Crystals, Dark Red Bang Crystal of Valor, Magic Crystal of Infinity Crit Hit, Magic Crystal of Infinity Back Attack, Corrupted Magic Crystal, Glorious Crystal of Gallantry Ograd, Crystal of Brutal Decimation, Crystal of Mysterious Darkness, Ancient Magic Crystal of Crimson Flame Power, and finally Visionary Crystal of Elkar. Now the PvP ones I would recommend from this section include 
Crystal Valkar, Jin Magic Crystal Viper, Dark Red Fang Crystal Valor, Red Battlefield Crystal Carme, Corrupted Magic Crystal, Red Battlefield Crystal Viper, Glorious Crystal of Gallantry Olicus, Red Battlefield Crystal of Power, Crystal of Mysterious Darkness, Red Battlefield Crystal Harpia, Ancient Magic Crystal of Crimson Flame Power, Olicus Crystal, Any of the Bond Jin or one glorious crystals depending on what type of class you are playing including the olicus crystals of ignoring stun and resistance also depending on what class you're playing and finally visionary crystal of elkar now we're going to talk about the defense section for pve i would recommend the crystals dark red fang crystal armor and the crystal of frozen bitterness pve there are only two crystals here that i would recommend running unless it is a very specific situation now, the rest can be helpful depending on your situation. For example, if you have way more AP than you should and you don't have enough DP, this could be helpful. For the most part, you will have enough DP for zones and you just need AP crystals or attack crystals. In general, I just do not recommend functional crystals unless you're doing some life skills, which even then, a lot of times, these are not too helpful. And the only ones I would readily recommend for life skills would be the vital crystals or the life crystals. These ones help with both life EXP and life skill mastery. Now finally we have the combined crystals, back to where we started. For these ones I would recommend any of the Hoom Garish and Makalod sets, whether it be the base ones, the Han ones, or of course the most expensive ones, the ultimate ones. I would recommend any of the tiers, any of the crystals, or any of the fragments of the Hytes, Bung Wongs, or gear, as they are all quite powerful at any grade. Now lastly, out of this section, I would recommend you run the Rebellious Spirit Crystal. Of course, this is for PvE. PvE, there isn't much of a difference. I would recommend any of the tiers, crystals, or fragments of the Bongwongs, Aites, or Girins. I would recommend any of the Ultimate Hooms, Smacklaws, or Garvish's sets. And once again, if you are just getting started, then the normal Garvish, Maclod, and Hoom sets are still quite powerful, just a cheap price. Now that we've covered each different section, what crystals I would recommend running from each one, let's talk about the different sets that I recommend you use for different levels of gear. Around seasonal gear to about 600 gear score range, I would recommend you run just the cheaper sets, ones that just help you out in the baseline grind, stuff like Combined or Han, Garvish, Maclod, and Hooms. I wouldn't recommend you focus too heavily on this stuff as you can still spend a lot more on your gear rather than crystals. If you're starting to get above that, say 610 to around 660 range, I would recommend you start working on your crystals a bit more. Add stuff like Rebellious's into your sets, maybe get a few high Tays or Girin's crystals or fragments, maybe not tiers at this point since those are still quite expensive, and add in a couple of attack crystals like Elkars, Vipers, Valors, Ocreds, Corrupteds, or even more. Here's a picture of the set that I am running now and so that I recommend you run for a little bit. There might be a few changes you want to make to it depending on your class or how you prefer to play. Some of the changes, if you do want to make some that I would recommend changing would be instead of running Ocred Crystals, you could run Gallantry Ocred Crystals. They're a lot more expensive, but they do do a bit more than the ones that I'm running. I ran these because they are cheaper. Instead of Addises, you could run Crystals of Bitterness. But beyond that, this is roughly what you're going to want to run around the mid-tier zone, about 660 gear score, and somewhere around that zone. Once you start getting up higher, you might want to move up a bit. And a part that I'm not at, but if you are really, really starting to get up there, around 680 to 700 gear score, or even beyond to that, then I recommend you start really focusing on your Crystals. Add maybe Tears, or add Ultimates into your sets of course you can still run stuff like rebelliouses those are still of course really good for grinding now that will be all everyone i hope you enjoyed the video as i said at the beginning make sure to subscribe leave a like turn on notifications leave a comment show it to your friends watch other videos do anything you're possibly gonna do and i will see y'all later have a nice day and night whatever time's in this for you and goodbye everybody